Hi there, Karen Polarity here from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well today and recovering from any Super Bowl parties that you might have been at. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, in human design weather, the gate of the gate 30, which is the gate of intensity or desire. Appropriate for Valentine's Day, right? Okay, so we've got the sun in gate 30, which is down here coming right off the bottom of the solar plexus. And when the gate 30 forms a channel, it hooks up with the gate 41, as it does later in the week, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it started yesterday, February 13th. It goes until February 18th. And at the same time that the gate 30 is in the sun, we've got the earth in gate 29, which comes off the top of the sacral here. So um, in which we call the gate of commitment or perseverance. So starting the week, we've got no centers defined, as you can see here, um, which means it's relatively calm for most of us. Um, on Wednesday, though, Mercury moves into the gate 41, which is right here. And so this forms the channel that we call recognition. And so it's the gate, uh, the channel from 41 to 30. It hooks up and it will define both the root center and the solar plexus. And so we'll have those defined for a few days just until uh, the 18th when the 30 moves out. Okay, so what is this gate 30 about? So it's about desire. Um, the other half of it, by the way, the 41 is called fantasy. So basically fantasy and desire coming together. The desire um, can be pretty intense. And so we call this feelings or the clinging fire in the original I Ching. And it's the freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate. Um, and basically we all have desire, right? We all have desire, whether it's for... Um, um, material things or sexuality or uh, fame or fortune or, you know, any of the things humans desire. We have this feeling of desire and it doesn't go away. It's always there. And um, the, the, the funny thing is Richard Rudd will talk about in a few minutes is, is that we try to get rid of it or we try to transcend it somehow, or we try to say, oh no, we don't have any desires or no, I don't have any wants. And that's not really the truth for any of us. And so that, um, illusion, right? Uh, it really never goes away. We always have some desire. Um, in the incarnation crosses this week, it's called the cross of contagion, fates, or industry. And in the gate 29, we, it's called commitment usually, or uh, the abysmal or perseverance. <laughs> the abysmal, I think, is because some commitments we would rather not get into. Um, and we say yes, and then we kind of regret it immediately. That's the energy of this kind of gate. We also call it the, the, the gate of yes, basically, um, where it's hard to say no to things. And so the definition here is the deep within the deep, really uh, persistence despite difficulties that has its inevitable rewards. So eventually we will be rewarded for our perseverance, but sometimes it's hard along the way, right, for most commitments. In the Gene Keys, commitment where the gate 29 is called half-heartedness in the shadow. Commitment is the gift and devotion is the CD. So when we go to look at the Gene Key for uh, Gene Key 30, the shadow here is desire. The gift is lightness and the CD is rapture. And so as Richard says in this graphic, lightness is when we can look at desire with equanimity. And what he means by that is that the, sh the shadow part is the desire, right? And as I said, I said a moment ago, and as Richard says also, there is no such thing as no desire, right? That's really an illusion. There's always going to be some kind of desire. Desire is what pushes us forward as humans. It's literally what helps us to evolve, to have experiences, to, to try new things. To And whether it's about um, desire in a sexual manner or uh, going after fame and fortune or just trying to get the next new car or um, or anything or a degree or, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for, it's a desire. And that those desires push us forward and they help us to evolve. And no matter how weird they are, how strange they are, uh, they're always helping the collective, right? All of humanity to evolve in some way. Those desires are what pushes forward. Um, and Richard actually says that in, as we evolve even further, those desires will um, burn up in a way. That's the clinging fire piece. You know, we're always kind of clinging to our desires, but eventually they'll burn away. Um, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So um, in the meantime, we're, we're dealing with our desires. The gift here is lightness, which is when we can, in a way, transcend those desires, but not fully 
transcend them, right? So you still have the desires, but you kind of take them in a lighter sense. They're, you're not as serious about them, right? You're not as intense about them because that's part of this gate too. This gene key is intensity. Most, well, shall we say a lot of people who are having a desire can get intense about it. And especially if they have this gate, they get very intense about it. And actually this, this uh, energy can actually be pretty intense for people around them who are um, sensitive to those kinds of energies. That's the kind of, of energy it is. Um, so it's no, no um, coincidence, right? That St. Valentine's Day happens to um, be on uh, or during this period of the gate 30. It's about desire, but it's also about intensity. And that um, desire can be intense sometimes. And so the gift is to treat it lightly, right? To have a sense of humor about it, to um, take it with a grain of salt, to realize that life is kind of an illusion anyway, and we all get to um, experience it in our own way. But if we can be lighter about it, if we can have a sense of humor, if we can treat it as kind of a tragic comedy, um, that we'll have a better um, sense of ourselves and a better relationship to the desires that we have. So there's nothing wrong with having the desires. Go ahead, have your desires. We're, we're all evolving because of those desires, but we don't have to take them all so seriously, right? We, we you know, um, on, the, on the lower, on the shadow side, the, the repressive nature actually is very, is over serious people uh, who have this gate of desire. They get really serious about their desires. They, they're so intense that, you know, they're so like, you know, um, nose to the grindstone kind of thing. Whereas um, the other uh, reactive people on the lower end are flippant mm -hmm. where they, you know, just say, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. And, you know, let the cards fall where they may, or, you know, let people think what they're going to think. And those are the people who are usually, those are people who are thought of as both flippant and uh, really not too serious, right? They're people who might reject whether it's religion or politics or whatever, but they're doing it in a flippant way and they're, and they're kind of snubbing their nose at everybody else at the establishment, which is fine for them. They can do that, you know, whatever they want, but they're, it's, that's kind of both sides, right? Really very serious or very flippant on the shadow side. Then with the gift, we get to move up a bit and have a higher frequency about us, um, have a lightness about us, have um, not, and not, you know, having a sense of humor that's not uh, directed at anyone in particular, but really almost self-directed, right? Almost like we're uh, just taking ourselves much more lightly, taking our our own path more lightly, and and being able to kind of make fun of ourselves, right? And and realize that it's all an illusion, and we're just here to experience it and have our experiences and push forward in any way we can, but to enjoy the, basically to enjoy the ride. So as much as we can, that's a possibility. So he also says, as every human being learns, the cycle of desire is eternal. In other words, there's no getting away from it. Those, uh, um, uh, I think it's Eastern Buddhism says that desire is the root of all suffering, but it's like money, right? They say that money is, can be the root of all evil. Well, it's not money that's the root of all evil. It's really the love of money that's the root of all evil. And so it's the same thing with when we're either trying to get away from desire or trying to um, be in the desire. It, either way, it's, it's not going to end up that well for us. But if we're taking it lightly and just, you know, taking it for what it is, the desire is always going to be there. That's what's pushing us forward. He also says, it's not that you become helpless in a victim sense, but that you realize you're beyond needing help. So we're not victims, but we're beyond needing help in, in trying to transcend that desire. So we've got a number of people who are born in this sun gate, 30. Um, and again, these are the crosses of contagion, fates, and industry. And so these would be people who are, you know, as you can see, in their own fields, quite um, intense, um, desiring of uh, probably of, you know, some fame, some notoriety, some um, 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 sports acumen, like a Michael Jordan, um, Chris Farley as a co comedian, John McEnroe as a sports figure, um, uh, Thomas Watson as the head of IBM, um, Louis Timpany um, for his uh, creative artwork with stained glass, right? Toni Morrison with her beautiful books. And those books happen to be uh, some of the ones that are on the band um, book list right now, um, which mm -hmm. I 
wonder why I'm even having to say those words. <laughs> it just is uh, funny. But um, as a lot of people have noted, the banned books are the ones the kids are starting to read now. So, and it's a good time for all of us to reread them, right? So uh, this week in history, um, the League of Women Voters was started on February 14th in Chicago uh, as the 19th Amendment um, that gave women the right to vote was about to be passed. In 1929, there was a big um, uh, gang war, basically, with Al Capone called the St. Val Valentine's Day Massacre. Um, but on the same day, Sir Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in his uh, lab. In, in uh, 1965, Canada... Canada's maple leaf flag is raised for the first time. Um, I didn't realize it was that new. Um, in February 16th, uh, in 1937, DuPont patented the new thread nylon, uh, which replaced silk in a number of products and reduced costs. And nylon is still being used to this day. In 1959, the United States launched its first weather station in space called the Vanguard II. And in um, eight, 1688, um, just what would it be about um, 70 years after the first slaves came to the United States, Quakers in Germantown, Pennsylvania adopted the first formal anti-slavery resolution in America. Um, and so they did not allow slaves in, within their territory. Um, and in 1885, speaking of banned books, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain is published in New York. So uh, with this week, I would say um, have a great time for Valentine's Day. Be aware of your desires and, and, and look at, take a look at your desires. What, what do you really want? What do you really um, seek? And how much intensity do you want to put behind that? Because the intensity can be lighthearted. It can, you can have some lightness about it, or you can be really serious about it. And which do you choose to be? Um, there's a higher frequency definitely with when we're a little more, when we have a little more lightness in our being, right? And so I hope that you have a week that's full of lightness and um, figuring out what you really want and desire um, that will probably show up a bit, but some intensity might show up too. So, so be aware of that and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. Take care.